Welcome to an episode of Anime Splash. My name is Neil Trotter. I'm Ricky Morris. In Anime Splash, what we do is we watch the first three episodes of an anime, and based only off of those three episodes, do we decide whether or not we want to continue watching the entire show or just stop. So take that for what you will. <laughs> um, today, this episode, we checked out an anime called Densai. Bunri no Crime Edge. Okay. And or we're as in English the Severin Crime Edge. Oh okay, did not know that. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Uh let's go with the plot breakdown. Take All a right. look. Alright, so in this anime it focuses on focuses on this boy named Kire and he has this obsession with cutting other people's hair. And one day he uh, meets uh, this other girl called the, who's known as the Queen of Hair, and she has this, and her hair is cursed that it, you know it can't be cut. But he finds out that his scissors are can, is able to cut her hair, and that is because the scissors are were actually used by an ancestor of, of his that you know murders people, and you know when he cuts her hair, it starts this uh, this game where. You know, mur other mur other people who were who had descendants that were, you know, murderers, that, and they own their their ki their tools that they killed with, or their killing goods, as they're called. And um, you know, and like in this game, like apparently Kiri has to protect the this girl from getting killed by these other people, because you know if she dies, like I don't know, like a wish is granted or something like that. Something like that. Yeah, I didn't yeah. catch that either. <laughs> yeah, apparently, like all the kill, all the killing goods are cursed, and it, and it makes like the owners want to kill people. So, yeah. So the only way to stop that apparently is to kill the queen of, like the queen of hair. Yep. Yep. All right. So let me tell you about what I thought about this anime. Very interesting, mm -hmm. right? He gave you the plot breakdown, and we read the synopsis, a little paragraph, and that's the picture that describes the show, and I immediately thought it was a stupid concept. Thought it was pretty dumb. So I assumed, okay, this is probably going to be like a parody, a comedy type of show, where it's like, maybe it has a little, few small serious parts, but it's mostly a comedy. No, no, not at all. This is definitely on the serious side, which is kind of, I thought, ridiculous, because it's about some guy, and he's using scissors haircutting scissors as a weapon to protect against murderers with who are trying to kill it like he said queen of the hair or this girl, little girl whose hair keeps growing like you know, Rapunzel or something like that I just thought it was just really just kind of dumb <laughs> and then they had these uh, little fight sequences where they're fighting with these they call them the what was it cursed goods or the killing goods. The killing goods and the killing goods could be like hair scissors or like a syringe, and you know basically like you play the board game Clue and you get all those <laughs> uh, items, and they're having these really like intense anime fights with these weapons and it just doesn't, doesn't, looks kind of silly. Um, I you know first episode right off the bat I'm like what is going on this guy is kind of almost like pervert it, pervert like although when you start understanding what the show is about it kind of makes a little bit more sense but still it was just kind of weird <laughs> where he was, has this huge obsession with hair and then there's this girl who happens to be in this situation where she needs her hair to be cut and then it's kind of like uh, this, they have this mutual arrangement it's a very weird <laughs> kind of uh, yeah, it's not really perverted. It's just silly. <laughs> so and basically, like he's channeling his his impulse to kill through hair cutting, and the girl's hair keeps growing back every night. So like, like each episode, I guess, like the girl's gonna come in with this different hairstyle. So yeah. Yeah. Now I get that. That's a cool, um, you know, idea, right? Somebody has a dark impulse and they have to channel it. I mean, you know, it goes back to like you know, 
like a vampire, right? Who's trying to has a desire to suck somebody's blood, but trying to control it through some other method or whatever. You know, I, I get all that. That's cool in itself. But the way what it is is how they use like you know the cutting of hair to relieve that. Well, I just thought it was kind of laughable. <laughs> um, it, it was just kind of a silly concept, but. You know, then I thought about it, you know, I, I thought about it for a little while, I was like, you know what? First of all, anime in general, mostly silly stuff, right? But I, even more so, when you think about it, it, it's almost like a fairy tale, you know, because when you really think about it, most fairy tales are pretty stupid <laughs> ideas. I'm talking about Snow White, pretty left field type of stuff that goes on Snow White, or, uh, Rapunzel, Sleeping Beauty, all of those kind of fairy tales, classic throwbacks to the folk tales, they're pretty out there, you know. This would fit well in that style of storytelling. So then I asked myself, well, you know what? Uh, it is silly, but, you know, I, when I came, everything else about the show is actually, I thought, now Ricky, not with me here. I thought that everything else besides the concept was really well executed. You know, what's going on here? This is just me talking. I thought it had some really good cinematography. What do I mean by that? I thought they did a, the anime did a, uh, through the visuals, told the story very well. Now what's up going on? Uh, structure wise, um, well, let's stick with the visuals, right? Um, yeah, just the whole, uh, let's see, like, <laughs> this, the whole struggle, for example, the whole desire to cut some eyes here. No matter how, it, it was really silly, he's like really struggling with that, but it's almost like put it in a Shakespearean style fashion, and it, just the fact that it is really dramatic. Although the thing he's struggling with is kind of silly, I thought. Well, there's that other girl that wants to, that with the syringe, and she wants to kill people too. It's like, I don't know, she's like even weirder. That's what I thought too. It's kind of it's just as silly, in my opinion. <laughs> it does, like, you know, so could you give him, like, I don't know, just the syringe, maybe like a better weapon, you know? <laughs> it's just, I just thought it was kind of like. I just I, I just prefer to use the word silly. <laughs> and even then, like she's like 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 her killing good is like there. It's like because of a technicality because like apparently like the person that used it, like, used like this weak drug to weed out weak patients and like only two people died, and so that somehow qualifies her as a like this mur horrible murder and now it's like a cursed item because two people died. But, I mean, well, you know. People dying, that's terrible, but like compared to the other stuff, like the main character's scissors were used to kill dozens of people, probably. I believe he said 200. Yeah, okay, hundreds. <laughs> yeah. Hundreds of people. So the guy with the hammer, he's going around smashing people into walls yeah. and stuff, so it's like, okay, so. I'm there with you there. I'm just gonna tell you right off the bat there's a fight scene where the girl, there's a girl with a syringe. And she, with the, they're fight, the, the syringe girl is fighting against this guy with like hair cutting scissors. <laughs> and could you imagine what kind of fight that is? And, and it's not like your typical like uh, Jason Bourne style, like Bourne Supremacy. No, it's like a, more of an anime, Dragon Ball type of, I mean there's no fireballs, but there is a lot of lighting effects and there's flips and stuff and I'm like, this is just... You know, like it's like, I don't know, from what I remember it was like, he stabbed her and you know, she's, you know, just kind of walking it off. Like, she stabs, he stabs her in the neck, I think, somewhere around there. And it's like, you know, she's just still walking towards them, and like, you know, like, she... And you spoil it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is only the second episode, though. Yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> I was, what was I gonna say? Uh, but the fight scene is really uh, 
cool, I thought. The only problem is, uh, I don't know, it's just, I just can't get over the fact that it's a syringe and a scissor. And it just makes it look very, like, silly and cornball. I don't know, I just, can't, I just thought the whole the situation, the execution of the story in the uh, anime is great. It's just the, uh, what it's about is where it fails, I think. But, I mean, this is just me. Uh, but I also thought, you know, Ricky told me maybe it was a little. He thought the story was slow, but I thought it was actually paced pretty good. In my opinion, see, I'm all about. Get, let me know what the story is about as, as quickly as possible. Like, don't waste my time. And I'm, I, I don't like anime or just shows in general where you're watching like ten episodes, you still don't know what the hell is going on. I mean, that's just like a disrespect to my me as a viewer's time, right? But I thought it was pretty good. Like, what was it? Episode number one. Right off the bat, you know the the two main characters. You know exactly what they're about, pretty much. Like, you know their personality, and you pretty good. I mean, to my opinion, like that ep that one episode could have been standalone itself. You know, they, they they had a conflict, they had a resolution, and you know it's just the last part, like the last minute they throwing this to be continued. But if they didn't throw that to be continued, you could have ended the show right there. Second episode, pretty much the plot is revealed. Like, what is actually going on? Why do these people have these weird obsessive uh, fetishes and, or things like, you know, obsessiveness? What's going on with that? Third episode, you've got a good introduction of the action because they had the first really major true fight uh, scene. So, for episode one, two, and three, you basically get a preview of pretty much the entire show. Like, so you, you, you can pretty much know then and there whether or not you want to continue watching or not because the whole show is pretty much given to you in the first one, two, three episodes. Personally, I thought out of all the anime I've ever seen, this show um, does the best job of what we do, judging an anime based off the first three episodes. Meaning that, yeah, you, like I said, you get a complete understanding of what this show is exactly about in episode one, two, and three. Which is, I gotta give credit where credit is due. That, that just shows that the creators of the show are respecting the time of the viewer. Which a lot of just people who make TV shows in general do not do. So I gotta give a props for that. And that shows a great deal of good writing and good stru uh, structure of the storyline. Uh, with that said, I still think the, the, the uh, concept of the show is pretty stupid. But I think that's maybe an opinion. And like I said before, uh, there are plenty of successful stories that have really dumb, weird, stupid, silly concepts that kind of work, like old school fairy tales. This is kind of like a fairy tale story in my mind. You and the romance in there. Yeah, I got the romance. I mean, if this came out during the time of like whenever the whatever time Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs came, it would have fit perfectly. <laughs> so. Uh, but, I'm just not into the stupid kinds, I'm, I'm not, so, uh, yeah, I would not continue watching it. <laughs> but, not, that's not to say that it's a bad show. I think it's actually a really good show. I think a lot of people would really like this show. But, I don't know, I think, Ricky, you probably maybe disagree with that. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's actually a bad show overall. Well, no, just, uh, admittedly, I watched this late at night, so I was tired, and, you know, you're in that mode where you're just kind of grumpy, and you don't like anything. But, oh, I see. But, um, yeah. But, you know, the um, the first two episodes I just had a hard time getting through. Mm -hmm. And, um, but the third one, you know, it sucked me in a lot more, so. Um, but, uh, but, uh, you know, I would probably, I mean, I might continue watching this, like, but only after, like, a, a long list of other anime I'm trying to finish, so. I see. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to watch it because I can't get over the silliness of this plot. However, I still think you should give this show a chance because I think it has some really good cinematography. It has some great structure in terms of story. So if you're into the fairy tale style of storytelling, this is going to rock your boat. For those of you not into that, the whole weirdness of a fairy tale, no. <laughs> uh, but check it out. This is Densai 
Boonerly no Crime Edge. Right. Severing Crime Edge. There you go. Check out Anime Splash. Comment if you wish. Uh, we got a Facebook page. Check it out. Like it if you wish. <laughs> um, recommend an anime for us to watch. It's all good. Until next time, though, just tune in. All right? This is Anime Splash. <laughs>